go at basically doing rotoscoping on top of a video. When you select your video file formats, uh, Adobe Animate only deals with FLVs in terms of embedded video that you can then draw over the top of. So I, this way I can actually see it play back and it basically does a conversion for me. Embed video on stage, no, uh, the expand timeline, include audio, next. Now it has a few technical problems, but anyhow. Um, the, the goal of this is not actually the, the technical side, so I'm just going to call that movie. Um, and then roto, for rotoscoping. Uh, first off, you'll notice a technical problem if I just zoom out a little bit because it's a lot bigger than the stage. Um, and I'll play the head a bit so you can see it. That is the stage. So there's two ways to fix this. Either shrink the video or increase the stage. Uh, either or is valid. So if we select the video layer, we can grab a corner. Holding down Shift will reposition stuff, but if we hold down Shift and Alt, oops, I'll just undo that. Shift Alt grab a corner, we can slide it into that corner until we get something roughly positioned. So that's now locked to that edge and all I need to do is bring the bottom of the stage up. So selecting off that I can go to the stage height and just shrink it a little bit. And here I'm just eyeballing it roughly. So let's go 108, uh, 308. That looks pretty good. And now I'm ready to draw over the top of it. So I'm just going to select a random chunk of this video, let's say from about here and just insert a keyframe. Now I need to start drawing, so these draw three drawing tools here, we've got the pencil tool, which is great for, and I'll just zoom in again so I can um, lock that so I can then just draw the glasses. Now you notice it's doing the shapes here, if you change this from straighten, which is the shape stuff, to smooth, just so it does smooth lines, um, and then alternatively you also have ink which keeps more of the detail smooth out a little bit same effect can happen with the paintbrush and also the brush tool each one has slightly different effects so and there's a you know get the swatch of colors ready so I'm just going to grab the swatches and drop that shove that to the top notice the blue line that's now locked in so this way I can quickly select my swatches and that looks really garbled, but anyhow, not much I can do about it. So you can set, get the lines. The blob blush brush is a little easy. I could call it the blob brush, but it's basically the brush. And you can resize with the arrow keys, sorry, the square brackets, just like in Photoshop. Um, okay, that's currently that color, so let's just go. It hates me. Oh, wait. Now it's gray, so. Select that, that is now becomes the active colour, so I should be able to yes, swap that. So you can see here. And jump on a couple of frames and insert a you know work out where the scene transitions. So drift slightly with the tracking of the camera. And if I move on a little bit I can actually cover a lot of this rot rotoscoping quite quickly. So here I can just insert uh, another blank keyframe because I'll get it's the frame after, whoops, undo, a couple of frames after, that one. So I'm going to insert a key keyframe there, blank keyframe, and I'll get back to that in just a sec. But over here, I could actually be really lazy and convert this whole setup. Because everything's static, I'm just going to convert it to a motion tween. So here, boom, that's where I'm starting my animation. Things drift that way for a few seconds, yep, to about there. So if I just reposition my god awful mess to there, and then the camera jiggles up and down, so I can just do that. I'm not even going to bother with that movement. And then that just sort of transitions out that way a little bit, maybe up a little bit. So here you can see it's sort of, I'm just doing a bit of fake tracking to the camera and I can add that stuff in. Flicking to here, um, again I'm just going to use a, a paintbrush but I'm going to use the inking and really it's just a matter of tracing the outline and really I want to get the impression of the hand. So I'm just going to rough it out. Oops. Move on a couple of frames. Oh, a frame. 
here I'm going to need to redraw it again so I'm going to do a blank keyframe and I should actually be doing this in black not uh, to give a comic book style outline and I've just stuffed up the thumb but hey that's okay this is really just a demo piece for you guys so you can understand the process that we're going through and then next frame this one I might actually just I'll just insert a keyframe but in this case I'm just going to cheat a little bit because the hands fairly static um, but I'm going to extend that that little piece can be deleted along with that bit this bit oops just I want to actually pull that in really and it's doing all this weird stuff so forget that uh, E for eraser and I might need to redraw a few of these chunks and B for brush no what's the shortcut key for this one Y all right so uh, um, eraser make it bigger notice how it changes shape because this is an old flash feature or Adobe yeah, flash feature that carried through to Adobe animate and basically yeah that's what it does so I'm just gonna rub out all that stuff um, uh, what's the I need the V for the this select thing just gonna butcher it up a little bit here oh, no, I'll just erase the whole bloody lot it's just a bit messy too much messy Y for the brush and this is where the keyboard shortcuts actually become really useful because if as you learn them just pick up one or two it'll make your processes so much quicker because you don't have to keep um, directing the mouse over here to select a key yeah that's close enough for this example and again same sort of thing rub out the bits you don't like or even just move the whole lot close enough um, Z insert the keyframe first then move done and another keyframe here um, back to the eraser weird pudgy little fingers I'm drawing wonderful um, all right uh, I also need to get rid of that line and that line and that line God, I might as well just turn with a blank frame. Control A to select all. Get rid of oops, eraser, get rid of that. And then Y to brush it back in again. And you can just, I mean, the process, as I said, is simple yet time consuming. So I'll just get all that done. And again, next frame. And that's pretty much all I'm doing. Sometimes I can just cheat by using the um, the move stuff. So this one probably need to redraw that line. So I'll just drop that in there and that in there, and then I could add in all the dots and that sort of stuff. And that's a bit of refinement over the top. So I could get like this thing and go with a red to go smaller. That dot 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 dot. Dot, 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 dot. Just do some random stuff here. Go to the other stuff. I know it's not making much sense. So, so oh, angled. They say angled brackets in some cases, but the greater than, less than signs on the keyboard down near the full stop and the period or semicolon. Yep, full stop and semicolon will allow you to frame advance, frame retreat. So again, this is another speed technique to get this stuff happening a little quicker. Uh, with the dots, I would suggest that you actually copy them from one thing to the next. So if I want to move the dots from here to the next frame, what I can do is I'll use um, V for my selection tool. I'm just going to hold down Shift and select all these dots. Alright, and I'm going to go Control c to copy them. Advance to the next frame. Control, uh, Control v for paste, but Control shift v to paste in place. So control shift V, I've just pasted them back in place and now I can drop them down a little bit to indicate the movement of the hand. And you can see that there. So and that's that. And you can do his face or if you're doing a later chunk of the animation. Obviously you don't want that there. The but you can then 
draw that stuff in. Pick a one second section that you want to do and then save it and submit. Thank you.